This week, we're going to take some soundings from across the country and plot a profile of the Broom Weissler frequency. Welcome to another Met Pie Monday. Hello, I'm John Lehman, a software engineer for Unidata. This week, I wanted to take soundings, which we've looked at a lot before, and take a calculation that we haven't looked at before, and use that to plot a rudimentary profile of the brunt weissler frequency across the country. So the brunt weissler frequency is an indication of stability. It's the frequency at which the air would oscillate if it were perturbed, or if it's an unstable air mass. And the frequency is imaginary. So what we're going to do is do our imports first. We're going to get a transect of five stations from west to east across the country. We'll calculate the mean brunt weissler frequency across a layer, and then we'll make a plot of that. So we're going to import metpy.calc as mpcalc, import matplotlib.pyplot as plt, numpy as np, from date time, we're going to need to import the date time object. From metpy.units, we're going to import the units registry as well as the pandas data frame to unit arrays helper. And from siphon.simplewebservice.wyoming, we're going to import Wyoming upper air. Oh, and we need an import here. All right, so our stations going from west to east across the country, I'm going to make a list. I'm going to use OAK, GJT, TOP, ILN, and MHX. So that goes pretty much across the middle of the country from west to east. I'm going to make an empty dictionary called station data to hold all my data. And a date time object, I'm going to use the current days 12z sounding. So now it's time to get our data so for station and stations. I'm going to print getting station so we know where we're at in this process. Our data frame from the Wyoming upper air object, we're going to use the request data method, which if you look at the documentation by pressing shift tab, you'll see it takes a time and a site ID. The time is date. And station, since we're iterating through that list of iterables of strings of our station names, will be the station ID. Now we need to do the pandas data frame to unit arrays helper to take this data frame that Siphon's going to return and turn it into a united thing that MetPy is ready to do calculations with. We could do that on another line, but in this case, I'm actually going to just wrap this call in pandas data frame to unit arrays. So we do it all in one step there. Now to calculate the Brunton Weissler frequency, we need height, which is in the data that we're going to get back from the radius on. And we need theta or the potential temperature. So I'm going to go ahead and add to my, now it's a unit arrays dictionary. So I'm going to add a key theta. And we're going to calculate the potential temperature from MetPy's calculations module. So looking at the documentation for our vertical coordinate, this needs pressure, that's our height index, if you will, and temperature. So our data frame pressure, which really, again, it's not a data frame, it's a dictionary of unit arrays, but for this purpose, we're going to access it as if it were. Pressure and temperature. Now we're ready to calculate the brunt weissler frequency. We're going to calculate the brunt weissler frequency squared. I'm going to call it BV squared. It's one of the more common things that we would look at, actually, as opposed to the brunt weissler frequency itself. 
Brunt Weissler frequency squared is the function we're looking for, using that tab completion to help me find it and not have to type out that very long name. It's going to take the height coordinate and the potential temperature theta that we just calculated. And since MetPy is unit aware, it's attaching units and carrying units through and doing all the unit conversions that you need here so you don't have to worry about it. Now our station data dictionary, which is empty at the beginning, keyed by the station name, we're going to set it equal to that dictionary of united arrays. So we let that loop run. It loops across our five stations across the country, goes and gets the data, converts them to a dictionary of united arrays, calculates the potential temperature, uses that to calculate the squared brunt weissler frequency, and then we have our dictionary of all of that data put together. Now this next part, there's many ways you could do it. I'm going to show you the way that I chose to do it, which is I want to calculate the mean brunt weissler squared. So I'm going to set up an empty list here. For station and stations, we'll loop again. And we could have done this in our first loop, but I wanted to do it separately. We're not optimizing here. We're just trying to see if this is a plot that's even interesting to us. I'm going to, from station data, get the data for that station, call it DF, just to make all of my uh, next lines look a little bit easier instead of indexing into that dictionary every time. Going to create a keep index where we're going to keep the brunt weissler frequency. And that is where our height coordinate is greater than or equal to 100 units.m for meters. And notice this is not the keyword and, it's not logical and, it's the ampersand, which is bitwise and. And the height is less than or equal to 5. And instead of putting, just to mix it up, instead of using 5,000 meters, we'll say units kilometers, just again to show you that MetPy's unit support really does make it easy to write in whatever units you're working in. And the mean, Brunt Weissler, we're going to append to that the mean of our dictionary of united arrays, the squared Brunt Weissler frequency at each level. And then we're only going to keep the keep indexes, so between one and five kilometers inclusive. And unfortunately, because plotting with lists of united things sometimes doesn't work so well, we're going to take the magnitude and drop those units now. Unit support is great, but it doesn't always work across different packages anyway. So now if we plot the mean Brent Weissler frequency, we're going from west to east across the country. We see values closer to zero near the west coast, which is currently where there is a low pressure system sitting, becoming much more stable as you go over the center of the U.S., and then decreasing a little more towards instability as we go off the east coast, which makes sense synoptically with what's happening right now. We could also do a plot of the Brunt Weissler frequency with height for each station. It's maybe not necessarily the most instructive plot, but let's see what it looks like. So for station and stations, we're going to get the data from station data again. Just going to use the simple PyPlot interface here to make a quick dirty plot to see if this is a plot that I want to fine tune or not. Okay, so we're going to plot height and BV squared. We'll go ahead and put a label with the station name. And let's see, then outside of our loop, I'm going to put a horizontal line at y equals 0, colored black, and a dashed line style. So I know when I'm stable and when I'm not above or below 0 there. 
and a legend. Oh, a X H line. All right, and there we go. So now we've got our stations colored and a plot of Broomweisla squared. So our units make sense. They're one per square second meters along the X. So we can see that as we go higher in the atmosphere, the Broomweisla number generally increases until we get to somewhere in the neighborhood of 0 0.0005 per second squared out here in the higher altitudes. But down low, we see that indeed there are some different uh, values with these higher values at the Topeka station in the center of the country and the lower values off the coasts. I hope that you found this useful and I'll see you on next week's MetPie Monday.